Hey guys, today's goal is recursive functions. And some of you may already have this down from class, so you would know where to fill in, where you need to fill in. Whatever you don't have in your notes from class, just add it in. Um, at, on the bottom or on the back end, um, whatever we did not have in class. Okay, so first, as we talked about, um, you have to look for the pattern, and most of you see that see the pattern quite uh, quickly. So write down the directions first. It says write the now next usually now next is in all caps uh, write the now next equations for the pattern all right so the first one we're going to have is three seven eleven 15, 19. Okay, so first, let's talk about what these numbers represent. Because we have to decide, are they going to be the X values or the Y values? Well, first, all these numbers that they're given in the pattern, these are known as, quote unquote, the values also known as the range, also known as the Y column, also known as, has lots of names, the next. I'm going to put it in all caps. Okay, so when we are working with recursive functions and they give you a set of numbers, this is actually the Y column, okay? So uh, two major things that um, they'll be looking for. First, they want to know if you know the start, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Of course, it is your starting number, so your start is going to be 3, okay? So that is like one of the answers, pretty easy. Then it wants to know your now next statement. Um, it's kind of backwards because they say now next statement, but they really want you to write the next first. So how it goes is you write your next, just write the word next, because you're going to say what your next is going to equal. Your next is going to equal whatever the now is, and then whatever's happening to get the next number. So here the first number is 3, and then it's 7, and then it's 11, then it's 15. So you can see obviously that it increases by four each time. So it's just going to be whatever the now is plus four. So that is the answer for that one. So you'll be, you'll, you will be asked to give two things, the start, which is the starting number, and then the, the next, which is whatever it is happening now plus whatever's happening or minus whatever's happening. Okay, so let's try one. It's pretty simple. One, two, four, eight, and 16. All right, so remember, you're asked to give two things. You're asked to give the start, and then you're asked to give the next. And that's gonna be the now, something happening to that. So, of course, our start is going to be 1. I'm going to underline it there. Then the next, that's going to be whatever's happening. So, if it goes from 1 to 2, from 2 to 4, from 4 to 8, to 8 to 16, then it's being multiplied times 2 every time because 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so forth and so on. So it's going to be whatever the now is times 2. 
and that's your answer. That's your recursive statement. Okay? All right, another, just till you get the hang of it. Five, eight, eleven, fourteen, seventeen. Okay, so your start is going to be five, because that's what you're starting with. And then your next, this one's pretty easy. Your next is going to be your now, whatever the now is, whatever you're starting with. Now this is increasing not by multiple, but it's increasing by adding. It's increasing by three every time, so it's just now plus three. All right, one more. One, ten, one hundred, one thousand. Your start is going to be one, and then your, let me underline that, and then your next, this is a multiple. So when it's a multiple, later on you'll learn it's going to be something a little bit special. Uh, it's going to be your now times 10. All right. So now let's move on to the next kind, the kind that we got stuck on today in class. Okay. So we have a term, and then we have the value. Remember, that is similar to having your x and y axis. So let's say the term in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the y value, or the value, is the 5 that goes with the 1, 8. 11, 14, and 17. All right, so first let's look at it. You have, um, on the term side, it's increasing by one every time. On the value side, it's increasing by three every time. So let's go ahead and do our recursive statement first. So recursive statement, we have to have our start. Remember, the start on the recursive statement, it comes from the value side. All right, so your start, value is 5. Okay? Now, your now next statement. So we're going to have next equals the now plus 3 because it's increasing by 3 every single time. Alright, now this is where we needed to come up with um, that equation. That equation, I'm going to put it in blue. Well, first let me underline there. That equation that we were trying to come up with, that formula that will work for this problem every single time. My pen is acting up a little bit. But it is um, the explicit formula. It is the one that works exactly with this all the time. Um, so you, and this is where I'm trying to take you with it, okay? So what you do is you look at your increase from on your, on your values. So you know that it increases by three every time. Now, the thing is, we're to start from, well, in this case, we are starting at five. However, if we were to start at zero, what number would we actually start at? So if this is increasing by five every time, I'm sorry, increasing by three every time, then we would use that increase, the three, over your change in x. So your change in y is three. I'm going to put the y here. This is the change in y. 
So the change in y, if you remember, we put a little triangle there, over your change in x, and your change in x is 1. So that's really your slope, if you remember from last year. So if, um, if that's your slope, then your output is going to equal your slope, which is 3x, plus 2. Okay? Now, where would I get 2 from? I got it from if my original x value was 1 and then my y value is 5, then if I were to have 0, because I don't have enough room to put it at the top, then what would the 0 be? Well, if it's increasing by 3 every time, if I were to subtract 3, then I would be at 2 with a 0. So that's where the 2 is going to be at right there. So that's going to be your explicit form. It's 3x plus 2. So let's try another one. This is the one we had in class, or one of the ones we had in class. All right, so one, two, three, four, and five, and then 52, 46, 40, 34, and 28. All right, so your start is 52. Everyone should be okay there. You know what the first number is on the y-axis? That's your start. All right, now you're next. That's going to equal your now. Plus, what's happening? Well, it's decreasing, and it's decreasing at a steady pace. It's not, it's not a multiple, but it is decreasing. It's decreasing by 6 every time. So your now is plus negative 6, or you could say now minus 6. Either one is fine. All right, now the explicit formula, or the explicit form. So this will be our output, or our y. I'm trying to write it a couple of different ways so you get used to hearing um, all the different versions of y. Your output, all right. So if your change in, I'm gonna put it over here. If your change in y is negative six, because that's what's happening every time, it's decreasing by negative six every time, and your change in x is one, and your slope is negative 6, or 6 over 1. You don't have to put the over 1. So negative 6, and then plus. Now, remember, you need to know your starting point. Now, our start from 1 is 52, but what is going to be our start from 0? So we know that this is decreasing by 6 every time. And if we go the opposite way, we need to increase by 6 to get the 0. So if we add 6 to, to the first term of 52, then add 6 to that, it's going to give us 58. So that means our starting point from 0 is 58. All right. So now let's look at the one that we had problems with. Now, if you notice, on the, other, on the last two examples, they were all increasing by a steady number by um, either being added by the same number or subtracted by the same number. When they're being added or subtracted by the same number, then you just take the slope and it's just being multiplied. Now, however, this was not increasing by addition or subtraction. This was increasing by a multiple of two. So here's your term and here's your value. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we had negative 3, 
6, negative 12, 24, and negative 48. All right. So we still go through the same process. We have our start. Our start was negative 3. We're all good there. And then, then we have our next. And our next is our now. And we knew that it was being multiplied times a negative 2. Because negative 3 times a negative 2 is a positive 6. And that's the next number. To get to negative 12, we said 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. To get to positive 24, negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24, so forth and so on. So that's our recursive statement. Now, and that's all you have to do for the recursive. But now, for the explicit, this is where it got a little bit hairy. Okay, so the explicit form, when you're dealing with a multiple increase, like it's being multiplied times 2 or multiplied times 4, what happens is the, X, the, um, the multiple that is being used that actually becomes an exponent. It becomes an exponent. Okay, so I'm going to give this to you and then we'll discuss it more in class. So you're going to take, this is going to be your output. It's going to equal your 3, which is your starting point, okay, times your negative 2. And negative 2 is the noun, all right? And what happens is your term, your, um, your domain, that's going to become an exponent just because you're increasing by a multiple. So it becomes an exponent. So your starting point, negative 3, your multiple of 2, but then it's to the exponent, and then it's minus 1. So just to show you that it does work, negative 3 times negative 2, and that is to the, I'm going to put the first one in, the first term is 1, and then minus 1. So that's negative 3 times negative 2, and that's to the 0 power. That's negative 3 times 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. And so negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and that's your first term. Okay, let me do the second one. Negative 3 times negative 2, and that is to the 2 minus 1, because I used the second value of x. So negative 3 times negative 2 to the first power. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Okay, you do one more. Negative 3 times negative 2 to the 3 minus 1. I'm running out of space. And so that's negative 3 times negative 2 to the second power. So that's negative 3 times 4, because negative 2 to the second power, and then that's negative 12. So that's what happens when you have a multiple. That is what happens. You have to put it in, and you have to use exponential notation. So we will practice more of that in class, and make sure you do the next page in your packet, or the page that I signed in your packet. And also, let me put this here. Make sure you get your parent's signature. Talk to you later.